Okay, very quickly on horoscopes, because on, to the point of people's tangled minds, I am in the intersection of a Venn diagram of people who have multiple degrees and read the Cosmo Astrology page. Mm -hmm. Does that worry you about me? Only if you wanted to become head of NASA. In this video, Neil deGrasse Tyson joins Naeem Haraza on her channel to talk about a bunch of different science-related subjects, and I've done another video on this. But in this clip, they start by talking about astrology, but then I'm also going to jump to a point where they talk about one of my, you know, sort of nerdy little obsessions is whether or not we're living in a simulation. And I, I feel like uh, we must be living in a simulation because it's the... Uh, it's the easiest explanation of why everything is so crazy right now. Um, anyway, let's watch this together. I'll have thoughts as we go, and then I want to know what you think in the comments. But okay. otherwise, there are plenty of jobs for you in the world <laughs> where you can read your horoscope and it, it won't matter at all. But when I read your book, I saw that you have taken my entire, my stars. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, you got to that part of the book. And you have taken away... Scorpio is no longer a month. It's like a week. Yeah, in your the book, universe and it doesn't include did that, not me. Not you. Yeah. So how did that happen? Is that about time? It's about Earth on its axis. Earth is spinning, as we uh -huh, you know. Yes. But it's also tipped. And if you ever played with tops, you might remember that they process. Process okay, so they means... spin, but then they wobble. Wobble. They okay, wobble. Process. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the Earth wobbles, mm -hmm. and that wobbling over 26,000 years, mm -hmm. shifts the correspondence of the constellation and the month associated with it. Yeah. And it shifts it through completely, a full 12 months. So every 2,000 years or so, mm -hmm. the sun passes through a different constellation than the astrological charts would have you believe. So horoscopes are not real. <laughs> there are many reasons for them not being real. That's, a, that's among them. That's among them. Right. It's a hoax perpetrated on adults. So I shouldn't say hoax. Hoax implies that the people perpetrating it know yeah, that know it's... That it's know that yeah, it's, they're I, believers. I think, they're belie I think there are people who propagate this who fully believe it. Yeah. And so then there's no real guilt there. And so there's no explanation for the fact that I, as a Scorpio, connect more, I believe, with cancer people. So <laughs> I've seen descriptions of the Zodiac. Yes. Where it says these are 12 prominent constellations in the sky. Mm -hmm. You said you were what? Scorpio. You were Scorpio. And you connect with cancer? Yeah. People? Okay. <laughs> I like to date cancer. <laughs> okay. Or sometimes Aries. Is that better or worse than any other dating app we might have? I don't know. <laughs> but the... I just did the calculation before I came today. Oh. That the four brightest stars mm -hmm. in the constellation Cancer are actually quite dim. And there may be as many as 500 stars brighter than the brightest star in the constellation Cancer, which makes it a dull, boring, and uninteresting constellation. So I should stop dating Cancer. You've just expanded my dating pool, Neil. That's okay. great. Thank you for that service. <laughs> Yeah, but that's funny. I, I think that's cute. Uh, this is the part where they start talking about the simulation. Is it possible that we live in a simulation? Yes. And my best evidence for that is just when things are kind of stable, let's have the leader of the free world be a New York S City real estate developer. There's got to be someone simulating us and throwing that in just for their entertainment. That's your, be your, your <laughs> best evidence for a simulation is Donald Trump. Okay, wait, 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 it wouldn't have to just be that. And then, so, so now he's not in office. Yeah. And then. He comes back. One, and then we have Biden. Things are pretty stable. We need a pandemic. <laughs> so yeah. Throw the pandemic. Well, yeah. I think, I think. And then Biden becomes a little less stable. I think, then. I think one <laughs> argument for a simulation is how, how periodically Something extraordinary happens in the world. The world doesn't just stay in a stable... Chaos. Chaos. And if you ever play these simulation games, yeah. that's what you want, because that's where it's more interesting. That's where it gets interesting. Yeah. I used to play Sim City, and every now and then Godzilla would walk across the city. Like, There'd be fires yeah. and everything would be broken. And Godzilla is not real, but it's metaphor yeah. for an assault on the city, yes. which is exactly what 9-11 was. It was an assault. It's not Godzilla, but it's but when you're simulating we, the fire department, the police department, unrest, yeah. what is tax money doing? Are people unhappy? My friend Ian has a list of reasons why he believes the world is a simulation. They include things like wells. Wells? What's wrong with wells? Just the idea that you like put down and there's water, emergency broadcast system, just like things, observable phenomenon that seem odd and simulation-like. For me, like 
all things drilling are that. It's like, it's like reminds me of being in a video game where like Mario Kart, like, you know, Mario hits the thing and then a mushroom comes out and he gets bigger. Uh -huh. That seems like we're li living in a simulation, just the natural. I see. So he's saying there's no law in the universe that says if you dig, you get water. So when yeah. you dig, you get water. Clearly, somebody put it there. Oh, I need some energy. Let's put oil there. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, let's put the sludge into a car. It will power a car. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of odd. Good. Like, okay. the whole thing is odd. Okay, so it's like uh, Minecraft, where see. you just there's stuff there, and you do it, and you build a yeah. little world. See, Chuck, we don't even need weed. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. But how would we find out if we are in a simulation? How would we know? There are ways. Okay. One has been suggested. So, uh, gamma ray bursts. These are pulses of gamma rays uh -huh. from the universe that some are higher energy than others. Yeah. And if you find it's the highest energy of anything we've ever yeah. measured of anything, if we find an edge to that, where above that, there's no mm -hmm. more, that could be the edge of the simulation hmm. because you can't simulate something to infinity. You have to put some edges on it. Right. Like the Truman show. It looks like a sky and clouds, but he goes out there and then it's, it's a wall. Right. He hits the wall. Up until then, it was fine. Right. But if you explore, this is what exploration does. It, so, it probably annoys the, the programmers. Yeah. Because we're reaching for the edge of what you thought we would ever acquire. So then Mars could be good. Good as what? Good because it pushes the edge. Sure. Or it could just be fall into the line of the simulation. They want us to go there. The simulation would not need, you would not want it if you are the simulator, to simulate everything if no one was looking at it. If I'm digging, you'd only simulate what I'm digging to in the spot where I'm digging. I don't have to simulate it over there because you're not digging over there. So that greatly improves the computing power right. of the simulation when you localize it to only places where people are yeah. granting it attention. But yeah. Here's a way to consider this. When we look in the universe in the search for intelligent life, that comes with a big assumption that whatever we find would agree that we are intelligent. <laughs> but who who declared that we're intelligent? Ourselves. We, we did. Yeah. What? What? Okay, and what's the closest species to humans? Monkeys. Chim chimpanzees. Chimpanzees, yeah. Yeah. How smart is a chimp? It's 1% DNA difference between us. We have the James Webb Space Telescope and philosophy and art and music. They have none of it. You right. can stack boxes and reach a banana. Now, if you're religious, you might say, what a difference that 1% make. Makes. We're special. Yeah. Or... You take another view. Maybe the difference between stacking boxes and reaching a banana and the James Webb Space Telescope is as small. Yeah, it's like a one to three percent. As that one percent. You say, oh, come on, Tyson. Get well. Imagine, because our toddlers can stack boxes. And yes. I'm going to stop it there, but it goes on and they talk about a bunch of other stuff. So if you're interested in watching the whole video, um, look it up. And, and the whole thing is an hour long and it's on uh, Naima Raz's channel. I think her show is called Smart Girl Dumb Questions. I'm, don't hold me to that. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's worth a watch for sure. And um you know, if you need a break from all of this politics, politics stuff like I do, sometimes I, I, I find that science stuff like this is a nice palate cleanser. Um, let me know what you think in the comments.